So thank you for coming. Why are we here today? It's because of one thing. We want to understand more about this whole Act 774 that is the buzzword among um, your professions, our professions, our health professions. Uh, the Act has already been there. It's uh, gazetted in 2016. But uh, what's going on in the progress and formation of the Council, your registration, is going to impact all of you. All right. So here today we're very privileged to uh, welcome Mr. Saravana Kumar Mariam. Mariam, sorry, Maniam. <laughs> I just turned him into a lady. He currently serves as a Principal Assistant Director at the, at the Secretariat for Malaysian Allied Health Professions Council in the Allied Health Div Sciences Division, that's uh, the Ministry of Health, right? He graduated from University Science Mal Malaysia and he started his career as a Forensic Science Officer. So if you're interested in Forensic Science, you can have a few words with him after this as well. Huh? He worked in a few state hospitals and in the Pathology Department in the Hospital Kota Baru Forensic Medicine Department, Hospital Tengku Ampuan Rahima Klang, and Hospital Sungai Bulo before moving up to headquarters of Ministry of Health. Now he's based at the Allied Health Science Division and he holds a portfolio for Allied Health Professions Act, Enforcement and Implementation. So can we put our hands together for Mr. Kumar? Okay, um, firstly, thank you for inviting me. Um, I think I'm in the wrong time because most of you want to go for lunch, right? Have you taken your lunch? Wow, so are you, you really you taking your lunch so early? Okay, um, I think uh, this is the first time um, Allied Health Science Division is giving a talk at IMU. So since I'm representing the Allied Health Division, uh, I need to speak about the division first, then I'll move on to the topic that given to me, is to explain to you uh, what is the act is all about. So how many of you are aware that this act is already passed in parliament? Yeah, I like your sincere answer. <laughs> so only three of you have actually know that uh, act is passed in parliament. So, should this act bothers you or not? Seriously, seriously, what bothers you? I don't, I don't think so. You all want to be bothered with this act, right? Until, unless you become a practitioner. Before that, you just need to know what is it all about, lah. But how many of you want to retain? Or I rephrase: How many of you want to practice as what you are actually going to be graduating? See, so not relevant to you, you all can go back to there. <laughs> Whoever don't want to practice as what you're actually graduating, then no need to hear this act. The one that actually gonna uh, practice as what they actually uh, train, and then you, the act become very important. Okay, um, so the act is enforced in 2016. So there are many, uh, not enforced, uh, enacted in 2016. There are many processes behind it, uh, so you might not understand if you are not in the picture. Okay, uh, so I know most, some of you might be or really want to know what's happening. Some of you don't bother. It's okay. Malaysian culture, they never bother until the last minute. Uh, so I, this is not my first talk. La. This is, I think, hundred something really. So every time, everywhere I go, I will ask one question. So how many of you have seen the act? Yes, Act 774. How many are want to see this act now? Uh, just go Google 774, you can download now. <laughs> if you're going to be a professional, please download. If you don't going to be a professional, don't download. Don't bother. Lah, eh? Okay? So uh, please download the act and read. Definitely you're not going to understand anything. So. I'm going to give you some run through about the act, so you just listen to me and have the act as a reference. Okay, so you can read the act uh, many, uh, when you are free. Right? Okay, so basically, um, I'm, uh, I'm the one, I'm not the only one, we have around five of us working together to and make sure the act come into force. 
Uh, so with, uh, with a limited five people, we've been doing it. Uh, past two years, we've been doing a lot of uh, meetings after meetings after meetings. And after that, then we, we, we found out that there are still a lot of things to be done in first before we enforce an act. Mm, uh, but I'll just give you a brief through what's been happening in past two, 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 two and a half years. Okay, before going into the act, Allied Health Sciences Division. This is the division that I'm from. It's a, it was a unit uh, before prior 2008. After 2008, it was established as a division, one of the division under the uh, medical program. So it is operates directly under the Deputy Director General of Health Medical. Who is now? Most of you are from Health Sciences, right? All of you are from Health Sciences, right? Who is the dire uh, Director General of Medical uh, Ministry of Health? Wow, very good. <laughs> no need to know, right? <laughs> since, since you are a student, at least you must know who is your VC, la, right? Who is your VC? Oh, it's wrong question, wrong timing. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what our division actually do is actually we are responsible for human capital. We are also responsible for the professional development, allied health professionals and governance of the allied health services within the Ministry of Health. We, we are not into the private sectors and so on. The universities is under the Ministry of Higher Education. But some places where we will work together, Ministry of Higher Education, Ministry of Health, we will work together. So basically, Allied Health Sciences look after Allied Health in Ministry of Health. So, but we don't go into the uh, nitty nitty thing, but we are just looking after the profession itself. So we ensure services are delivered in accordance to the quality standard, efficient, effective, and so on, as long as Malaysian will get the best services from the government hospital. Okay? You, can, you, you can read a lot of uh, review, anything, but still Malaysian government hospital still the providing the best services as they can go with the limited budget they have. Eh? So that is Allied Health Sciences. So after this, don't tell you don't know Allied Health Sciences. So they are the one who are responsible. Why I'm telling you them, uh, the, the division itself, because this division will be superseding the act in future. Once the act is enforced, the, act, uh, the division will become the caretaker for that, okay, in the Ministry of Health. So who are allied health professions? This is a very difficult, what you call, uh, definition in Malaysia because Everybody don't want to be in a very big group umbrella. They want to be stand alone. They want to be their own profession. But a health profession basically are highly skilled. We are very skillful people, uh, tertiary trained for autonomous. The tertiary trained for autonomous is currently happening, not many years ago. Most of the allied health, when you go back around 10 to 15 years ago, were diploma holders only. Now only we are going to the degree holders and then masters, PhD and so on. So we are a bit late compared to other countries. So other country they already uh, move on from uh, basic qualification is degree holders. But Malaysia is still providing because there's a necessity for Malaysia to be provided with the diploma holders in the country. It's a, it's a national policy. It is not something that we can uh, change overnight. Okay, so uh, you will be in the prevention, health promotion, diagnostic, treatment, support, and enabling independence about the patients. So these are the biggest uh, group actually working behind the scene. Okay, we are not the main, main medical stream, but we are the behind the scene. Most of time we will be overlooked all the time. So we came into a limelight when the act is coming to end. Parliament. So people then only realize there's a lot of allied health in Malaysia. Then people start being proud, being called allied health after the act is being enacted. But just imagine what will happen after enforcement. So now, now we are going there. We are not that late, la, but we are just around the corner. Okay. So basically, allied health division, science division in Ministry of Health look after this much of profession. So we have 30 to cover. They are divided into clinical group, laboratory group, and public health group. So since the allied health is designed this way, that's why our act also have 23. We just 
took from here. This become the framework at, the, at that moment when we drafted the act. So uh, basically, we have 16 uh, clinical group. You can see the number 16 under the clinical group, that's tutor. Tutor means they are, their position is tutor, but they're actually multiple profession. It can be nursing, can be medical assistant, can be physiotherapist, can be occupational therapist, and so on. Okay, and then we have laboratory-based group. So these are the biggest group, uh, clinical scientists on bio biochemistry, biomedical, embryo, forensic, genetic, microbe, and dental tech, and also medical laboratory technologies. So we have another group called the public health group. So here food tech, nutritionist, entomologist, health education, environmental health officer, and medical record officer will come in. So this is under the division, not under the act. Eh? This is under the division. So among this, we choose 23 to enter. I think we offer to all the 20, uh, 30, the 23 to agree to be. So this is the division of our division. Basically, we want to strive for excellence in healthcare services provided by healthcare professionals towards well-being of the patient. So there's no more treating patient. We want to go for holistic uh, approach. We want well-being. So that's the key word now, well-being, well-being. So many places you go. So Allah had already in... You are the people looking after the well-being, okay, actually. So you, you will be a more important person uh, when in future. Actually, you are already important person in most of the developed country. So we are coming soon. So the mission is to ensure provision of quality, safe, and effective healthcare is being provided, enhance the competency. So this act comes under this uh, vision, a mission to enhance the competency of allied health professionals through continuous education, evidence-based practice, and compliance to standard. So the problem is allied health all this while was uh, behind the scenes, so nobody actually uh, recognized their contributions or give them the due recognitions. And nobody also know what is the minimum qualification needed to be allied health. So anybody can come up with any certificate and claim, I'm so-and-so, I can provide services. But how you know he's really competent? Whether he actually went through a formal education and been, been vetted through and going through. Some people spend five, four years in university studying. Some people just spend four minutes in the internet, get the certificate. It's happening. And with the technology coming in, we don't know which one is, uh, which one is the right person or to the right job to the right uh, environment okay so that's why uh, ally help was uh, given the task to develop the act drafted the act and we took a lot of years to since 2009 we've been fighting for the act to be enforced uh, to be tabled to parliament only 2015 december we managed to table into the parliament when the minister, the, that, at that moment, the Dr. Subramaniam, he actually brought this act into the parliament. Because before that, uh, ministers, they feel like we need to wait for the turn. Okay? He brought it and hopefully he went through. With, uh, there are many, many, many few, uh, not many, few uh, things is not correctly spelled out in the act because it's just really great, but we, for us, we are very grateful that the act is passed in parliament because that's the first achievement after 39 years struggling to get the act to pass in parliament. 39 years, if I'm not mistaken, I calculated, collected the data from all this. Uh, I think most of the people who started the first fight actually uh, rest in peace now. Okay? So at least their work is done now. So this is Health Fact 2017. This is the most recent data that we have. In Malaysia, we have 36,000 doctors. Okay. We have dentists, 3,000. Medical assistant, 12. Nurses, 65. Pharmacies, 6,000. AHP comes about 36,000. This number only in government. Okay. So the private, we are estimating around plus minus 20,000. That one is rough estimation. Just what we did, we divide by two and plus another two, three thousand. So the exact number, we don't know. We've been asking the exact number for the society. Sadly, Malaysians don't want to be in societies. They say the society doesn't do for anything for them. Since when society do anything for you? You're supposed to do something for the society, right? 
I don't know where they get this ideology saying society must do something, then only I can go and join. We are very professionals, right? So please, get into the association, be recognized, start doing something for your professions. The association is there to, rec to bring out your professions, not the other way around. <laughs> okay? So, so I'm promoting someone because a pity all the president comes to us say we, we don't nobody want to come to us la. please la. can you put a clause uh, whoever want to be registered must register with the association first so they want to put that kind of clause into the regulation we can't because that's liberty uh, that will go against the uh, federation the constitution of federation federation of constitution uh, I'm a, okay uh, they, it's freedom, freedom for you to choose association. We cannot impose on you. But as a professional, you should go and then become an association, uh, associate with the associations. Then only they will start doing something for you. Okay, now let's come to the bigger picture. So that's all about the, uh, my division, what we've been doing and so on. So when Allied Health Act is passed, passed the number given to us 774. Very nice number, right? Okay. Uh, 775 is TCM, okay, and then there are other numbers also, 674 is uh, all related to health. And then there's another act that you all sh also need to know, 586, uh, the private health care. So when you go to private health care, you need to know about the act. Sooner or later, that act will en uh, uh, encompass allied health, but now at the moment, no. It will come eventually, okay? So let's go a bit about the act. So why, what is this act all about? So I changed the uh, slide so that it will give you some idea for the student. Because students need to be put it in words, right? If you put in picture, they, will be, they won't understand anything. Most of the time, they come up with their own ideology. Okay. So uh, you can use this slide later on. So the gazetted on 18 February 2006 yet to be implemented. That means yet to be enforced. It's no enforcement yet. Nobody requires you to register. We've been getting a lot of calls saying, when can I register? Can, should I register? They say it's not being implemented yet. Okay? But I'm very, uh, very, uh, I'm happy because some of them really, really want to be registered and really asking about it. But most of the people don't bother at all. Okay? But never mind. When the, uh, when the act is enforced, then definitely you will come and see us. Uh, then I will wait, I will say, I'll see you next week. <laughs> okay, so we, then, then we will have some power. At the moment, no statutory regulation in, for, uh, in force for the EHP except for optometrists and counselors. They fall under the LA Health, but they already have the individual act. So they are not being required. So all of you no need to be registered yet. Okay, so once the act is enforced, and then there will be some, uh, some announcement, very big announcement going on in all, all the media, then you start registering. So why, why, what is the Act all about? This Act will establish Malaysian Allied Health Profession Council. Their job is to register the person practicing as Allied Health Practitioner and regulate the practice. So when you regulate the practice, and then you cannot do what you wish for. Or you, you cannot do anything that you are not trained for. That is another way of looking at it. You should be trained and competent before you're providing your services. So how to make sure? We will make sure by you providing evidence to us. So what are the evidence? Later I will let you know a few evidence that you need to prepare so you can be. The main idea is why we need to do this, because we want to protect the public uh, uh, by ensuring that professionals are highly competent and they always work in ethical manner. Most of you, uh, the new generation, uh, the younger generation, you don't know anything about ethics. Maybe you know like, your ethics, like, but the real ethics, for, for example, sharing certain, certain information in social media. The name is social media. You shouldn't go into that, especially patient information. So, but for the convenience purposes, they start sharing in WhatsApp and so on. That itself already violated the ethics of a professionals. So as simple as that, you know. So a lot of things are not there. But when the act is enforced, the first document that you need to read and understand and oblige, I call it oblige, it means you must follow, is the Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct. You cannot go against the Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct. 
if you go against the, uh, the court, you will be called for disciplinary action. You'll be he held responsible for the actions. And uh, there are many things like inside the, the Code of Ethics. They are currently, we have already drafted the, the first draft. We've got 11 codes. But under the codes, we have a lot of uh, uh, other details inside that. So there are main 11 codes. Okay. Um, and then we, we, we thought we can enforce this here. Unfortunately, uh, this uh, preparation was done before the government change, actually. Once the government change, then we need to do a lot of uh, other uh, things to be in place. So now we will be hopefully, hopefully 2020, hopefully early as June, January, as early as January. So the, but that one is still not that, because we're still waiting for the AG Chamber to pass the regulation. We have done the regulation many times. We already sent to the AG Chamber. So AG Chamber are looking into the finalizing the act, uh, regulations. You see, once you have act, you need to regulation to enforce. The regulation is the one that going to tell us how we're going to enforce it. The act is just giving us the power. The, the means, how we want to do it. But the regulation is more important. That's why regulation is more scrutinized compared to the act itself. Because act, you can put a general term. Regulation, you need to put definite term. So that's why we are a bit, uh, a bit late. Okay? And these are the other health practitioners in Malaysia. We are the newest in the list. Okay? So we have medical officer, 1971, dentist, 71. But the oldest among all was nurses. The first profession of healthcare to be uh, regulated was nurses, 1950. Okay, mid-5, 66. Pharmacists, 51. Then followed by pharmacists. So at that moment, pharmacists and nurses was required to register. And 1971, only the doctors start registering. Before that, we were having doctors from UK. So they will be registered with British Council, actually. So it's not, not, not mean that from 50, we don't have any doctors. Huh? <laughs> we have doctors, but they're registered to the UK Council. And then optician in 1991, then latest is actually 2016. Okay, so we are the newest. The difference between all of them, all these are single profession regulation. Only the last one is multiple profession. Okay, so we have more than 20, we have more than one, we have many. That itself tells you how difficult it is for us to prof. All these are single also already having trouble to regulate. This one we have 23 type. So that means we have to speak 23 language in a meeting. Can we come to conclusion? Definitely cannot, because they refuse to speak in the same language. Okay, most of the profession like that. La. When you study, you are very friendly. When you work, mm, wait and see la, huh? <laughs> how friendly you are. <laughs> I'm just telling the reality. So I hope you all change. Be, be friendly as possible because we are belong to the same field, health and care. Look after health and care about everybody. Okay, <laughs> including your friends. <laughs> Okay, so the side I sold 39 years, almost to 87, 96, the idea, and then came to 2009. We took charge. Within span of eight years, nine years, we managed to gather the act. Before that, it changed pattern for many profession, association, and so on, until we have our own division, and division can brought the, bring the... Uh, but it took us eight years to convince the stakeholder so that the act can be passed. Okay, it's a lot of work. Eh? A lot of people actually contributed. And some of the pioneers are within your university now lecturing you. Mm? You should know lah, who are they. So please get to know them. <laughs> okay, they contributed a lot for this act. So since you, all of you are never read this act or never seen this act, now you can see the snapshot of the act. Okay, so you just need to know, it's a very short act, 46 sections only. 46 sections only. Okay, and it's divided into eight division. The division that you should focus, not all. Okay, not all, just few. So for each one, you just focus on if you are um, 
uh, visioning to become the member of council, then read number part two. So that is who want to be a member of the council, what are the requirements, everything is in part two. So establishing council function, membership, secretary and committees. But as a health profession, you should focus on part three. And part four, if you don't do anything within the scope, then you will see part five, disciplinary proceeding. Okay? But if let's say you are okay, then just focus on these two parts. Part six is offense. Let's say once the act is enforced, uh, enforced, you know, right? You will tell like, we will wait until they come and catch me, right? So when I catch you, uh, you will go into chapter six. Because most of you will wait until the last moment to register, right? And crash the system and blame the system slow. You, you all are IT educated, you should know, right? And more. So the system does not allow to, uh, to, to go in. So please get yourself registered as early as possible. Don't wait at the last moment, okay? And then um, enforcement. Previous act does not have F this cost clauses within them. That's why you can't see uh, council MMC go and catch doctors hall or dental go and catch anybody doing that. They will use the CCAP, which is the 586. Our act, we have enforcements. Now, now the new act, the dental 2018 already have the enforcement. That means we have power to go and investigate and catch you. Previous act don't have the power. They only have the power to register. Okay, so now this act empower us to appoint any government officers to become the enforcer. If we get information, we can raid your facilities. Okay, and then see whether you are registered practitioner or not, whether you are doing within your scope or not. So there are the, but we are not going to do it at the moment, lah. So let you be happy first. Okay, then we come. And general, I uh, think that is for us to worry about. Okay, so that is snapshot of the act. Okay, now regulatory framework. So what is actually in the act? Comprise element of statute to establish the regulatory body. See, you need to understand. There's regulatory body, there's professional body, there's association, there's society. All of them are different. In Malaysia, we always confuse with all of this. Okay. In certain country, the professional body is always the association. In Malaysian scenario, the, regu the regulatory body and professional body are the same, the council. But the council may appoint the, may give the power to the society. But we will see whether it needed or not. But both regulatory and professional is the council because the function is like that. I will explain. Okay. So what the council will do, they will grant registration to the professional. So now public will know the one that you are facing is actually a competent person. Once you are registered, that means you are being vetted through. If not, I just have to take your words. You are professionals and so on. So, and then once the act is enforced, the title that you're going to use is protected. That means you need to be registered to use the title. You cannot simply come out. This is uh, uh, what you call uh, physiotherapy center. There are so many physiotherapy centers, right? Most of them don't have any physiotherapist trained also. You just use the word because it's catchy. Okay? Physiotherapy center, mas uh, actually it's massage center. Lah. Uh, this is put physiotherapy more professional. Massage means you will have different idea in your mind, right? So, <laughs> okay? Uh, so, now the title is protected so you must be registered to use the title so that's how we're going to control so if you use the title without registering you are co committing an offense or if you are registered but never apply for practice certificate still using the title you are committing a disciplinary action and also partly offense okay so these are the things you need to know Next, yellow, uh, setting the prerequisite requirement, basic education. Now the council have the power to decide what will be their minimum requirement to become the professionals. So the power is given to the council. Next is continuous competency. That means we will enforce you to be competent all the time with the advancement. It is not like once you come out from university, that's it. You never learn. It cannot be like that anymore. Okay? So we will make sure the con co competence should be continuously. Okay, 
and then we will set up the ethics and professional conduct. So we will set up for you, so you need to comply. Then we will empower the registered practitioner, the public, as to what constitutes acceptable uh, professional practice. So you cannot do whatever you wish. You must be within the quadrant of professional and, and standard that provided by the council. And now there will be a body looking after complaints against you. For time being, it's only the organization. If anybody don't like you, they complain, the organization, the most they can do is sack you. You go to the next company, start all over again. But once it's we are in the picture, you will be liable for disciplinary action. If you are deregistered at the end, you cannot practice in Malaysia, plus anywhere in the world. The world, whoever, which country having the act, or they govern the practitioner, you cannot practice. So you might go to third world country, but they already have act also <laughs> governing them. So you can't go anywhere. Uh, okay, so that's all what we're going to do. So these are the things that are going to affect as a practitioner. Now as a student, no. So if you want to decide to change profession, you're most welcome. <laughs> Let's work for us. <laughs> okay, Malaysian Ally Health Council professional. So these are the function of them. So just now I told you professional body and regulatory body. Regulatory one, two, three. Regulatory body. Okay. Professional body one, four, five, six. That is professional development. So it's actually incorporated. So we have one one council looking after a very big work. In other country, they they already divided to association take some this some professional council will take some. But ours is very comprehensive. And then number seven do such other thing as may be required or permitted. So they give us that clause also. We can do whatever we want, provided it's still permitted under the Act. So how to do that is very difficult. <laughs> when we say we want to do, they say cannot, <laughs> not in the Act. But that's, that's why it's very difficult. They put, people think council got a lot of, lot of power, but the power is actually uh, governed. It's not, they can, cannot misuse the power. Okay, so once the council form, these are the council members. The chairman always will be the director general of Malaysian uh, Ministry of Health. Uh, deputy chairman is the director of my division. Automatic, whoever becomes the director will become the deputy, uh, deputy uh, chairman and will play the role as registrar. So you will have her, uh, the registrar sign on your certificate. And we will appoint a secretary from the Ministry of Health and finally, we will have 23 registered practitioners as the council member representing the 23 profession. If the number grows, the council grew. If the number reduced, the council reduced. So the council member, depending on the schedule two list. Okay, so that's that's how the member of the council will be. Okay, but provided they say the public sector must be always more than the private sector and the university. The, this is is governmental policy, okay? Next year, so who actually will be affected? Allied health profession. Section 9 of the Act clearly defines who will be affected. It says any allied profession specified in Schedule 2, uh, any activity relating to the allied health as prescribed by regulation under Section 11. So 9 and 11 will decide whether you will be in the list or not. Now since 9 is the list, if the profession that you are Training now is in the list, you should be registered if you want to practice. If you want to practice as that profession, eh? if you want to practice, you want to have your own business, then no need to, no need to register. If let's say you are a diet dietitian, you are learning dietetics, comes out, you want to practice a dietitian, you need to register. If you are a nutritionist, you come out, you want to be a nutrition, you have to register. Okay? But if you are you are a nutrition, you come out, you want to open a grocery shop, go ahead, no need to register with us. Okay? Understand not? So a lot of people say the, the degree required to register. No. If you want to practice, then register. Okay? Make it clear. If you want to practice, then you register. Okay? So there's no unnecessary. Okay, never mind. I register first, then I'll wait like, whether see I want to practice or not. No. No such thing. Okay? Uh, we can register you, but after six years, if you don't apply for practicing certificate, your name will be automatically taken out from the register. So there's a clause that actually preventing for you just uh, become a sleeping practitioner. <laughs> Cannot. 
Okay, so we the, the idea is we want to only have active practitioner in the list. We don't want someone just for the sake of the name. Okay, and then profession of allied health will be the definition by the act is any by any profession has the direct indirect. That's why this act is very very flexible. It can add can drop anybody because the definition given is direct indirect effect on patient care. So that's why. We have the public health group in, we have also the clinical, uh, the laboratory group also in, because they are indirectly involved in patient treatment, okay? So basically, how this is going to work? There will be two-step process to gain registration for Malaysian, eh? for Malaysian. After this, I'm just going to use Malaysian, non-Malaysian, okay? Two-step for Malaysian, you need to register first. Once you acquire registration number, then you apply for license for practice. So that is what we call practicing certificate. Our practicing certificate will be different from other council because other council is yearly basis. Our council is two years once. You need to re renew after two years, okay, every two years. Then we also have secondary registration as a specialist. This is under section 21. The two step registration, section 17. 16 requirement, 17 registration, okay. And 21 is specialist registration. This is something that we are still working on at a very basic level yet. Because we want to register everybody, then only we will focus on the uh, expert. So it doesn't mean we have PhD, you become expert. PhD plus A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and approved by council, then you become specialist. Okay, so there are many things will go. There will be a, a committee assessing this, okay, in future. Then we have temporary registration practicing for the non-Malaysian. So whoever is not a Malaysian having a, a foreign, uh, what you call, passport, if you are required, your service are required in Malaysia, especially in the university, we have a lot of lecturers also. In private hospital, we might have some people. So they need to apply to us. For them, it's yearly basis and they don't have any registration, they straight go for temporary practicing certificate. So there is one year, for Malaysian is two years once. Okay, clear? This is different from other. And once you, uh, you have a recognized qualification, council will de uh, determine uh, equivalence on case, was case by case basis. It means what we will do, we will recognize certain universities, whoever fulfill their criteria. Automatically, you will get registration. The one not in the list, you still can apply. We will we'll evaluate case by case, whether you can or cannot. If you can, then we'll see the gap and post condition. Okay, if you totally, let's say, um, degree in IT, wanna be a nutritionist because you wanna create apps as a nutrition app. Can you register as a nutritionist? You don't have any competence on the your learning is not in that, so you cannot practice. But should uh, maybe in future there will be IT for the health uh, health aspect. We are there in ministry. We are talking about regulating that also because people now simply coming up with apps replacing all these medical and healthcare uh, services. Okay, so this will coming uh, will be covered there. And then so just remember this section 16 registration. Practicing certificates, 22, renewable, 23, temporary, 24, registration, 21. All this in part three of the act, okay? So basically, how you all will be in future, we will have ministry, then the council will be under the ministry of Allied Health Division, and the chairman, registrar, members will be sitting there. We will have statutory committees, expert committee, investigating committee, discipline authority, and then secretariat. I'm actually now here. This unit is already running. This, this, not yet. Okay, so once the registered practitioner 23 appointed, act is enforced, then we will have a full council. This is the full council operational. Okay, this is how you as a Malaysian summary. So Malaysian, we will be putting a degree as the minimum requirement for you to be registered. Whoever have a diploma, we will have another way of doing it. So register, then you go for certificate, then renew. Very simple. Okay? Oh, all living ready. Right, they have classes, is it? Okay, sorry, bye.
Sorry because you can't listen for the interesting part. <laughs> okay, non-Malaysian eligibility is we always go for the higher qualification, master's, PhD, and then they need to fulfill other requirements. So that means whoever doing a degree level in Malaysia, just completing the degree cannot work in Malaysia for non-Malaysian. That's the act says so. That means you should be a practitioner before you coming to Malaysia. So you need to work in the other places. Then you become a practitioner. And then finally, uh, you need to apply and you also need to renew. Okay? So basically, this is what we intend to do in future once the enforcement. You register with qualification, training and experience for certain cases. Then you, reg you will regulate you with code of ethics, code practice and practice guidelines. You need to comply to this while you're practicing. So you will become a safe and competent practitioner. So by having a CPD and disciplinary process is there to actually to guide you, to, to make sure you are within the scope. So if let's say you don't follow the thing, what will happen? Complain, contravene with the act, act any against the code of ethics, professional misconduct, poor professional performance, information on fitness is wrong, everything. That means fitness to practice means you are mentally unsound, you have some unnatural behavior, weird behavior, all will be under here. And conviction, you are conviction with any law, you will be taken into consideration, disciplinary action will be taken on you. Okay? So basically that's all on the disciplinary, so this is the summary of it. Lah. Okay, these are the summary of offence, so this is what the, something that you can read on. So final few slides, just two slides, okay. So issue of challenges that we are facing. So why is 2016 uh, Act is being uh, passed in Parliament still not enforced? These are the things that actually prolong our, our ambition to actually enforce the Act. So number one, there's 23 with different qualification, different registration requirement, and some of them practicing non-health care using the title. So how are you going to regulate all this? So we are finding out one by one by one all this. You have to understand, times 23, eh? <laughs> all this times 23. So these are the problems that we need to people to agree to certain minimal requirements. Next, we have diploma degree. Both also is a basic qualification. One, the only difference is diploma, you can operate, run the services. But degree comes with autonomy. Diploma don't have autonomy. That means diploma must work with someone. Follow orders. So with follow orders, if you give them registration, they will give orders. So that is go against the Malaysian qualification framework, where diploma is level four, Degrees level six. There's a competency insufficient. So this is something that we are now th thinking how to go about it because the, the the nature of the country is this way. Okay, so we are trying to finalize this because it is within other ministry. We can't do much. Okay, and then we have medical laboratories. We have six of the profession listed. The medical uh, is all uh, divided into uh, what you call field. See, uh, the biochem, micro, embryo, that kind of thing, not put in one. Okay, and then we have other act coming soon to govern this single, single profession. But the owner of medical social officer is welfare, well, uh, under the uh, woman ministry. Uh, clinical psychologist in Malaysia, uh, is just one part of the psychologist big group. So psychologists also, they are coming out with one act, but don't know who will be the... Uh, caretaker. So these are the issues that we are having. We are still discussing how we're going to enforce this thing. Another big problem is we might have only 12 months for transitional. Whether the Malaysian ready to register within 12 months or we need to extend. Extend how long? Six months more, three months more, five years, ten years. The ten years then no need to registration, right? Okay, so these are the... Because some professions are really ready to go. Like nutrition, dietetics, I think the association are doing a lot because they are very, very prominent association. But others association, they are still small and learning. Biomedical, one of them just born last year. <laughs> two years ago, is it? Two years ago, two, uh, uh, two, they born, they are, they are still, uh, they are trying to run already. 
Okay, so they are doing a lot of things. Okay, and then we have not all qualification will consider. See, when not all qualification will consider, what will happen to the student who enter university thinking they will become ally health? Money spent, PTPT and loan, father's, mother's money all spent ready. Come out, you cannot work in Malaysia. What will happen to them? So whether to include them, not to include them. If you follow a standard, cannot include them. If you follow the standard, then there's no humility in that. They are Malaysian. And some of them are studying in overseas. They already spent 300,000, 400,000. Coming back, you want to work, work, serve the country? Cannot. So these are the issues that we are facing now. Undertake assessment. Whether you will be agreeing to, to take assessment before you are given a practicing certificate. So whoever been practicing, existing before the act, will they agree to be assessed? Will that be fair for them? And so these are the things that are going. Qualification out of the Malaysia. Who should be telling this qualification is not correct uh, or not, not, not uh, recognized? It's a very difficult thing to do. So we are finding a way. All this we already have a plan A, plan B, plan B, uh, plan A, B, C. But which plan will be enforced depends on the council. Uh, we will, we will for, uh, bring forward to the council. And finally, CPD is a compulsory requirement. This year, voluntary for medical officer. Next year, mandatory for medical officer. So that means with CPD, then you can renew your license. You know what is CPD, right? No? Don't know. Student maybe may not know, but you all need to know. Go Google what is CPD. Okay. Um, Ministry of Health already developed a s website called My CPD that will allow you to collect points and then it become like a, your online logbook. So we are trying, we already work with them. Immediately, whoever are gonna register with us, you just key in into the system, the, the marks will be counted for your licensing. It will be integrated. So it's open for all, free of charge. Okay, so gov government already developed the thing. So in future, that's not gonna issue, but developing your skill, that will be, so whether you're gonna go for courses, updating your services, whether you just want to sit down and then you think you're already great, uh, that's another problem. La. Okay, fitness to practice, this is something new. You, you, you might have, like as a student, eh, you know that student is not good, not doing anything, you're just copying others' work, you can't report anywhere, right? <laughs> you're not bothered, so it's his problem. As a practitioner, if you see someone is going deviating from the practice, you need to report. So that they will be called under the fitness to practice or they're having hand sound. In overseas, like UK, the person themselves surrender the certificate saying, I'm not competent. Even though they surrender, they have to go to a tribunal, check their competency, and then the fitness, then only they will be deregistered. Voluntary deregistration is not given that easily. You need to be vetted through. Unless you are, you, you just forfeit, lah. then it's a different story. Okay, and another, the biggest problem that we are facing, empowering public to get service from registered practitioner. Once you are registered, your cost might increase, okay? Because you are different, you are providing this. Malaysian might opt for the cheaper one, which not registered, okay? Example, eh, clear example, the den den denture problem recently. She did the denturing in the hotel making millions, uh, thousands of ringgit just by learning from YouTube and then give denture. How can you trust that person? Because you go clin uh, dental clinics, it, it will cost you three to eight thousand. Roughly, like, depends on the complexity of the thing. For three hundred, four hundred, so you do the denture. So people are opting for cheaper option, you know. And now with Lazada, Alibaba, you just can click, you will get the stuff coming to you. Okay, so these are the problems that we are having changed. So this is another biggest challenge. How are we going to impose? So finally, we hope, we hope by having this act, there's a governance by registration that you will be within, within the discipline, doing the work, right work, and consistent rules for everybody to follow. Not like one profession do more, one profession do less. And finally, you might, you will have a clear practice, job scope, and finally, recognition for the allied itself. When you are recognized, then you will get patient coming to you. 
So this is what we want to, but ultimately by having this act, this is something that we are looking forward. As a regulated practitioner, you will be accountable to himself or herself, he or herself, professions. That means if you, you can't do anything that's going to tarnish your profession name. Okay? Your client, you protect your client, you protect the community, you be accountable to the organizations, you cannot simply do anything you wish for, and finally to the council itself. And with regulated practitioner, autonomous practice will come. That means you are responsible to what you do. That, if you translate, I can sue you. <laughs> that means if you are responsible, I can sue you. If you are not responsible, I sue your responsible person, supervisor. <laughs> okay, that means whatever you do after this, people will just look for fault and there are some people just waiting to, to, to sue you and get money from that. Okay, so with that, the voluntary indemnity will come into place. You need to get indem 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 indemnity five, means you get insurance, insured yourself, your services. We are not putting as a legal requirement yet, but if there's a need, we will go for it. Okay, so finally, I think you all can read through. So we hope you'll become a professional that with a, with a certain standard, better consumer, better recognized academic practice uh, pathway, that means not simply go anywhere and come and become a one pro practitioner. Maintain, improve your skill, competency all the time. So, with that, this is final. This is for your information only. We have done this. We are currently doing this. We hope to do this next year. Okay? So, 2020 is something to look for. Not only Vision 2020, Vision EHP also. <laughs> okay? We hope we can enforce this. At least, we will we'll start doing something next year. Okay, and good news for you, maybe bad news for you all, uh, if let's say you're not graduating yet next year. Whoever been practicing before the act is enforced, automatically can apply to the council to be continue practicing. The one that coming into the picture after the act enforced, the requirement will be um, imposed on you. Okay, so that's the only thing. La. So that means this is a transitional provision given to the people who are currently practicing. Okay, with that, thank you. If you have any question, you can put forward now. If you don't, if you go back, you want to think first, you can email our, our secretariat or straight to me if it's any personal something you want to get to know. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much for the one who's staying. Uh, thank you very much also for the one left. La. <laughs> okay. That's all. Hey, thank you very much, Mr. Kumar. Uh, we have some. We have a mic, two mics over there, and then uh, you can use my mic also. If you have any questions, any doubts regarding the HP or enforcement of the Act or registration or what the heck CPD is, please ask him now. Okay, he's here for us. He's here to answer our questions. Okay, so yeah. Hi, I'm Nicole here. Um, actually, I'm not under this act, but I'm very passionate toward mental health. Uh, something very close to my heart is the clinical side. Okay, I just wanted to check. First thing is, because just you mentioned that there's no curriculum structures that is standard, right? So anyone claim from certain UCT, completed certain program, which is again registered, is there any guideline in terms of Ministry of Health? There's a standard where we ensure those who completed certain program that is a standard follow. First question. Okay, yeah. uh, formulation is very easy, it's straightforward because we have MQA will be doing all the, all the uh, setting up the standard for the accreditation purposes. They already have their committee, but it may not be translated in what the clinical psychology practitioners want because they just have a committee come up with their guidelines and so on. In future, once the act is enforced, the council automatically take over the job, not take over, la, we'll overseeing that. So that means in future, we will set up a uh, joint technical committee, will comprise of MQA and also the profession. They will decide what is the clinical psychology standard okay. and MK will enforce it. Okay. So that will happen after the enforcement. Currently, whatever MQAs do and already there stands because they are coming under the MQA Act. It's already a legal 
legal requirement. But from overseas, uh, that's a problem because we don't have any power for the overseas university. We can't even tell them what to do because it's up to their country. Once they come into the Malaysia, if they are, their competency will be evaluated by the committee that we're going to form under the professions. So that means once they apply to us, we will see, they need to also submit their transcript. And the transcript will be evaluated by the committee comprising the clinical psychologists. So they will tell us whether it's enough or not. If they say not enough, what is not enough? Then they might give suggestion what they need to do to get, to get practicing. Because we don't want them to spend money and time, they come back, cannot practice anything. We don't want them to become an illegal practitioner. <laughs> so we will try to facilitate them to top up with something so that they can continue practicing. After all, they are Malaysians, so we need to give them chance. Okay? okay. My second question is, <laughs> um, how about the other profession, examine neuropsychology, health psychologists, that will be more coming out, which is also related with health. So I just want to know, is that any We, we, we already possible? have theories from neuropsychologists, uh, clinical That's why the, the, the act only capture one branch of the psychology, which is clinical psychology. There are many branches. Suppose the act should be controlling the psychology itself so that everybody will be captured in the picture. Uh, but time being is clinical psychologist. Maybe in future when the numbers require us you to be regulated, then we will add on. Okay, so until now is clinical psychology only. Okay, what is the number that expected by the ministry? Oh. Last one, because this is, is always it? a question. Thousand, two thousand, three thousand. <laughs> Clinic, uh, as, has, as far as known, neuropsychology, we only have three in the country, all in private. Okay, all in private. Two is still studying, coming soon. Because we've been, been approached by the neuropsychology. Because neuropsychology is very difficult because you all belong to the same mother, but children are fighting each other. <laughs> okay, but for us, you all, uh, we will see by, by the needs. La. See, if let's say if the risk is very, very high, then numbers doesn't mean anything to us. <coughs> One also need to register. But if the risk is very low, then we will see whether they need to be required to be regulated or not. The first 23 went in, they given a, like a, a pass to go in. The coming, coming later will be really be scrutinized whether they need regulation. See, you are going for regulation primary importance is public safety, not recognition. Yeah. Recognition is secondary. Yeah. Okay, but most of the professionals want to be in the act so that recognition, so that they can claim insurance, claim this, and then make their life easier. So we shouldn't go in that way. The, the act is for the public safety, not for the professional safety. Okay, so we need to realign. We will see the needs. Okay, we will, once the act is enforced, there will be a criteria. We already have clinical genetic counselor approaching us. We already have CVT, cardiovascular technologies approaching us. We also have uh, uh, f uh, this, what called? Neuropsychologists, neuropsychologists are approaching us. Already submit some form of formal application to us. But we are not in the position to actually say yes or no until the council is formed. Okay, so the council will only decide. What we are trying to tell the same, form association. Deal with us with association. As an individual, you don't have the voice, you don't have that, that power to convene us. Association do. So that's why association is very important. Okay? Thank you. Uh, I'm Yi Kai. I have two questions. As well, first is related to Nicole's question, which is, if the profession who are interested to be part of Align Health, what type of uh, like application form or who do they need to approach in terms like the profession risk and all those things as well? Can I know what profession that yeah, you are interested in? I'm in chiropractic. I'm governed under the traditional Is complementary act. Yeah. But because I'm also part of an association called Complementary and Natural Health, so we have some of our members who are asking to join Align Health and also yeah, so we face some of the, the questions. Mm, if it's something grey, eh, that means something to do with a health, but it's more to complementary, then we may not be considering them. Because the 
the definition given is, I know, is very, very, uh, what you call, open-ended definition. But when we deciding, we will design the risk based on the risk. Because that's why I told you, the registration doesn't mean for recognition purposes. That is secondary, always for the public safety. If public does not get any harm from your treatment, we're not going to intervene. Let you work with your own. But let's say you pose a danger to the pa uh, patient, then definitely we will take you into the list. But for currently, because we're just starting, that's why we just focus the profession that already existed in the ministry. The thing is, the problem with us is most of the professional want to come into the thing, but when we call meeting or previously and not now, eh, they never come. They never bothered to come also. They say, I got practice, I got business to run, I won't come. So once the exit, then everybody want to come. So, but we will have some application uh, will be provided. Once the enforcement, there will be new professional need to come in. You need to write into the council, and then the council will tell you prepare this and this because it's not that easy. Eh? Once the council agree, we need to convince the minister to approve. Once the minister say uh, yes, then only we can amend the schedule. But minister cannot simply amend the schedule without the request coming from the council. Okay, so the council will do the evaluation and so on. So what will be the criteria of evaluation? There will be, uh, I, can, uh, I can say here, there's a criteria. But what will be the criteria? We need to wait for the enforcement date. Hmm? So there will be a mode for you to apply. Don't worry. Okay, so second question is, uh, because like TNCM Act, they have uh, three phases of implementation and the, the Allied Health Profession Act have like, in, uh, in enforced in phases as well. Okay. TCM is a bit different from our Act because TCM have a provision they can go staggered enforcement, not registration, eh? enforcement. That means they can set up the council, they can set up the professional body, they can set up the requirement and register. So all can happen at different time and different. Ours cannot. Ours is like one go. That's why it's taking too much of time. Because we need to prepare everything, then enforce. Our act don't have that provision. Because maybe that provision, the new act doesn't have that provision. The older act have. Lah. Okay? Thank you. But Thank we you. might be going staggered registration. Staggered registration means we will go with few profession first. Then, but that one is still under... Under few subjects, that's why I say plan A, B, C. Uh, so all the plans are there. We will tell the council to choose. La. So they might choose different. They might not agree with us, choose something different. Then if they say go all, then we have to go all. Okay. So the decision is not on us, it's on the council. The students are very quiet. <laughs> no question for the students, eh? Okay. <laughs> mm, okay. Uh, that's why that the, during my uh, explanation, I told, uh, I emphasize on the word of practice. You only register when you want to practice. You, not, you don't register just because you want to safeguard your registration. That means if you are planned to go master's, go for it, finish it, go and get a job or create your own job, then you register. But you're doing part-time master and then working while was weekend, weekend. Because allied health is as such, you don't need to work eight to five. five, eight to five. You can go for, for freelance, part-time. There are many people are doing that already. So we, we will cater that as long you fulfill the criteria of practicing, that means certain hours, we are still deciding how many hours you need to prove to us that you are practicing. But uh, having said that, as a student, once you graduate as a degree, you are able to apply if you want to practice. But if you want to continue study, please continue. But if your master degree require, to you, require you to actually handle patient, better be registered. Because you will, because your basic degree will allow you to practice really well, so better be registered. But if you go coursework or any other work, other like you do MBA, no need la, Then depends lah. 
Okay, uh, that's another good question. <laughs> very, very good. Uh, how how the lecturer feel? Uh? How long your certificate stands? Uh? Five years? <laughs> what will be the reasonable number? Because for us, we're having difficulty to set the day. Because if five years, five years last, last time is different from five years now, you know. <laughs> Five years la, 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 last time, the word never, maybe the word take 10 years to change. Now it takes minute to change. So the technology advancement in the field may go against you if you don't, in, in, not in the know. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the thing. Maybe three, maybe five, but we are going for maybe five. five. Because we know uh, may some people want to get married first and have family. <laughs> And some want to go do PhD first, then come back. But when you do master's PhD, or you are already in the development, right? no problem. But let's say you just, then suddenly after five years, thinking, boring, don't know what to do, then want to come service, then you need to, you still can apply. But they will have some kind of a competency evaluation. So whether you are able to perform to the minimum level what you required to do. If you cannot, then you may not be eligible. But you can go and train, get some other things. La. We never say no, eh, but we never say yes also. <laughs> there will be some condition to be fulfilled. Okay. Hello, again, I'm Faizuddin from chiropractic uh, profession as well. So uh, I just want to ask if there's any overlapping uh, practice areas in our practice, in our practicing area so is there any guideline or enforcement will be imposed okay. upon us this is a very yeah. malaysian way of thinking you know o overlapping so should I have i need the guidelines as a professional you should know what's your limit that is what you learn for for four five years right so for us to come up with the guidelines once we get become guidelines it become a control document you know once you control you cross you violate it's a very difficult thing to do and remember we are a light health we are also health practitioner some of things you are doing doctors doing whether doctor still allow you to do right <laughs> so you have to think in the broader sense I'm a, I have already have this competency am I able to do this if I don't know to do don't do don't extend your role just to be nice people or ambitious just do within what you capable provided with your experience and training remember that that's what professional all about you know what's your limit okay that's the word accountable that's why last slide i use accountability i know most of you want us to tell you what you no need to do don't need it. but if you tell you then you will become a profession just follow orders you will never expand as a as a what you intended to do so guidelines might come in for practices which is very highly risk highly risk we might have guidelines for practitioner for example you chiropractic right we have physio we have occupational therapists we have speech therapy all of them doing something which is related to all of them so whose one is whose whose is whose procedure so we are not going for that level sop we are not going to control we will control on the level of very big burden. That means we control your entry level, your training, and your competency. That's all we're going to control. And you decide. When you decide, you are accountable for all the action. If you go beyond what you require, we take action. Very simple. We take discipline action on you because you're going against what you're supposed to do. See, uh, we can go very rigid. Maybe in first few years, we might go rigid for certain profession, but we're still discussing, our profession are still discussing. But what we learn from other countries, we may not go for that. Because once it becomes a legal document, it's very difficult to retract. Very, very difficult. And so as long, very simple. If you have any problem with another overlapping, talk to them nicely, buy them food, everything. Get over it. Be, be friendly, that's why I say this is don't Thank quote you. me. Uh, this is my personal <laughs> explanation. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions from this side of the hall? We actually have yeah. an audience on on this side, so I don't want you guys to be left out as well. Do you have any questions?
Anyone has a question here? You're fine. Students, any questions at all? We tell you there's an exam after this on this. <laughs> We've got to ask now. Any questions? Anything you're concerned about regarding your registration, your license, what is the scope of practice and all that? You're fine? Okay. Lecturers did a good job, I guess. <laughs> it can go either way. Okay. So if you have any more questions, um, his email address is here. So uh, he's, he's very nice, very responsive, Mr. Kumar. So let's give him another big hand. And uh, as a token of appreciation from the School of Health Sciences, it's just a small little souvenir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much, Mr. Kumar, for coming. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so I guess we're done here. Thank you for coming today.